The Earth System, a video series for educational institutions for free use presented by the German Geological Society, the DGGV. Hello everyone, I welcome the viewers of another episode of my video series on the Earth System. In this video, I would like to look at triple junctions again and use a few examples to show how they actually appear on Earth. I already showed this illustration in the previous video. A whole series of triple junctions are shown here wherever the red circles indicate the meeting point of three plate boundaries. However, these are not all triple junctions that occur on Earth. That's because even the small plates and microplates, of course, always border each other with triple junctions. We will see this also in some of the following examples. I'll start with a very simple ridge, ridge, ridge system. We have this, for example, at the Rodriguez Triple Junction in the Indian Ocean. This figure shows the bathymetry or topography of the southern Indian Ocean. For your orientation, Madagascar can be seen at the top left. On this map, you can see the morphology of the seafloor. Bathymetry means that the respective water depths is shown on the map in color code and this results in a map of the seafloor surface. The lighter the color, the shallower the water depth. The Rodriguez Triple Junction can be seen here in the middle where you can see mid, three mid-oceanic ridges that converge here. The mid-oceanic ridges at the plate boundaries of the African, Indo-Australian and Arctic plates meet here. The angle between the mid-oceanic ridges is not the same on all sides as it was in the highly simplified model shown in the previous video, but the basic principle is the same. Spreading occurs on all three ridges simultaneously and the triple junction remains more or less stable in its position. Let's have a closer look at this part of the ocean floor. The Rodriguez Triple Junction is also very clearly visible in detail and is geometrically simple. As you can see here in this close-up view, the ridges actually start right at the triple junction. This is, however, not the case for every triple junction, as you will see in the following examples. First, uh, Let's have a look at the Galapagos Triple Junction. The Galapagos Triple Junction is also an RRR Triple Junction. On the bathymetric map, we see the East Pacific rise on the left side with a narrow thin line and the east-west trending Galapagos spreading system with its somewhat rougher seafloor morphology. The Pacific, the Cocos and the Nazca plates meet at this Triple Junction. The ridge segments are partly connected by transform faults, as here in the Galapagos spreading system, or at least in, in the section of uh, uh, the map which we see here, by overlapping spreading ridges on the East Pacific rise. The offset here is not that big and is therefore compensated with such overlapping spreading systems. Let's have a closer look at the central part of this triple junction. At this treble uh, junction, the situation is not that clear as in the previous example. Looking at the morphology, it is not clear where the ridges meet. And in particular at the Galapagos spreading center, it is not clear where the ridge extends further to the west. There are two branches to choose from and only the future will show which branch will prevail as a spreading system. We will have a look at another RRR triple junction, this time in the AFA triangle. Here we see the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden and where they meet the AFA triangle, which to the south merges into the East African rift system. At this triple junction, the Arabian, African and Somalian plates meet. The Somalian plate is, however, not yet completely separated from the African plate, and we can therefore define it as a future plate. 
this close-up of the upper triangle, we can see that the situation here is far more complicated than it first appears from a distant view. The East African rift system is the third diverging plate boundary meeting at the treble junction, but a mid-oceanic ridge has not yet been developed here. The Graben structures meet very young spreading zones where new oceanic crust is already formed, but which are not yet clearly defined. In addition, a small microplate has formed in the area of the Affa Triangle, which is called the Danakil Plate, after the Danakil depression in the middle of this plate. The boundaries of the plate are not entirely clear, but since it is surrounded on all sides by plate boundaries and the sense of plate tectonics, it is now viewed as a microplate. And with this microplate we have the problem, which I just mentioned before, which is the triple junction. There are several possibilities to define the triple junction. Wherever three plate boundaries or future plate boundaries meet, doesn't matter if it is a large or a, a microplate, we can define a triple junction. Well, let's turn to another kind of triple junction where three subduction zones meet. That is a TTT, a trench, trench, trench triple junction. Such like here in the figure of the Pacific coast of Japan. In this bathymetric map, the deep sea trenches can be clearly seen, in particular along the Pacific plate margin. Here we see the meeting of three subduction zones at the edges of the Pacific plate, the Philippine Sea Plate and the Okhotsk Plate. Japan partly belongs to the Okhotsk Plate, but also imparts to the Eurasian Plate, as you can see here. In detailed view, the triple junction cannot be clearly defined here either, which ultimately shows that small shifts occur again and again due to the dynamic movement of the plates, and in the end, the exact location of the triple junction is only a rough estimation. Now let's have a look at a triple junction with two transform faults and a subduction zone, which is the case at the southern end of the Juan de Fuca plate, here in the northeast of the Pacific Ocean. The tectonic lines are clearly visible, where the Mendocino transform fault meets the subduction zone beneath the North American plate, that is, the Cascadia subduction zone. However, the northernmost part of the San Andreas transform fault is somewhat less clear. There is no triple junction at the southern end of the spreading system between the Pacific and Juan de Fuca plates, even if it appears so at the first glance. The continuation of the Mendocino transform fault to the west is merely a fracture zone in which no lateral movement occurs. Both sides of the Mendocino fracture zone belong to the Pacific plate, which indeed move in the same direction. There are only vertical compensatory movements here, no lateral shifts, and therefore this is not a treble junction. In the detailed bathymetric map, we can see that the connection to the San Andreas fault is not entirely clear. The reason for this is certainly that the course of the fault is obscured by thick sediments on the edge of the shelf. The last example is an RTF triple junction here at the entrance of the Gulf of California. This triple junction is shown as one of several examples of RTF triple junctions, that is the meeting of a mid-oceanic ridge, a subduction zone and a transform fault, like here in this drawing in which RTF triple junctions are present not only at the entrance of the Gulf of California, but also at the northern end of the Juan de Fuca plate. Seen from a distance, this is actually the meeting of three different types of plate boundaries. However, upon closer inspection, you notice that the situation is much more complicated. The East Pacific rises offset to the west along a transform fault in some distance of the subduction zone and only then passes north into uh, the Gulf of California. The subduction zone, on the other hand, extends even further to the west and then also turns into a transform fault, which then meets the East Pacific rise. As a result, the small Rivera plate is formed here, and thus further triple junctions, 
such as the Puerto Vallarta travel junction here. Let's take a closer look at the eastern part of the River, Rivera Plate. The connection is not clear. Here is room for interpretation as to where the plate boundary is. It is considered to be a convergence zone between the subduction zone and the Rivera transform fault, but no subduction is observed there. Strictly speaking, one actually has to assume two triple points, one at the Rivera transform fault and another at the subduction zone. However, this cannot be determined more precisely at the moment. Perhaps this will be possible in the future with more precise bathymetric data. So, you see, the definition of triple junctions is often not that easy. The position of the triple junction changes again and again, make it difficult to determine the exact location in many cases. Nevertheless, they are essential plate tectonic elements without which plate tectonic movement would not work. And with this, we have enough examples for a treble uh, junction. This time, thank you for listening, and I'll be happy if you stick around. I recommend now continuing with the video Absolute and Relative Plate Movements.